Hi guys, welcome to this video and welcome to the channel if you've not been here before. Today I'm going to be building my new sim rig which is the Simlabs GT1 Evo cockpit. It's all down there in boxes at the moment and it's going to be going in that corner. And before we start the build, I'm just going to quickly show you my current setup and explain why I needed to get a new rig. So this is my current setup then. You can see it's right in the middle of my living room so it does take up a lot of space if my girlfriend wants to watch TV or something. Um, it's half of a play seat, and then that's attached to uh, this GT racing stand. But if, it, if I just stand here and give it a bit of a wobble, you can see it's, there's quite a bit of movement in the wheel there. So um, yeah, I've been needing to upgrade that for a while and having a permanent setup in another room will obviously make sure that the living room is free all of the time. Um, and then that's just a 55 inch Samsung QLED TV that I've been using at the moment. So everything's unboxed then, and we're ready to start building. The instructions are, they don't come on you know, paper. Uh, we have to scan this QR code. So I've got them on the iPad down there. Um, first thing I've noticed is the aluminium is extremely strong. I, I can just tell already that this is gonna be an absolutely solid rig. So right, that's enough talking. Let's start the build. Okay, so the frame is pretty much done. Screws are in fairly loosely so that I can adjust it to get a comfortable driving position. Next step is to get the seat on. So we're using the same seat that we had in our old setup and then get the wheel and pedals on, get, the, um, get everything in position nice and comfortable and then go from there. Okay, so I've got the seat attached now, the wheel attached and the pedals attached. The pedal mount is quite hard um, to adjust by yourself because it's very, very solid, very heavy. Um, so I'm still not 100% sure on my where I want the, the pedals exactly. We'll have a play around with that um, for a little bit longer. But everything else I'm pretty happy with. Um, it, you know, it hardly moves at all. It's very, very solid, which really um, I'm very, very pleased about. One thing to do note when you're building one of these is that it's quite easy to scratch the aluminium if you need to move things around. So just be careful of that if you're gonna be building one yourself. But I mean, it's, it's not very noticeable at all. And Simlab do supply you with plenty of screws. So I've got loads and loads of screws left over, which is fantastic. I've been able to use those screws to bolt the pedal, the wheel and the seat um, to the frame. So I haven't needed to use my own screws for that. Next up, we need to put together the monitor stand and then get the monitor attached to it. Right, so we have finished it. It's all together now and ready to be driven on. And I'm not gonna lie, it did take quite a while to finish. So not because it took a while to put together, but purely because of the time it takes to get everything set up exactly how you want it with everything in the right position. So yeah, that, that is something you have to bear in mind when building this, it will take a while and you keep having to go back and make minor adjustments just to get comfortable. So. Let's have a look at what we've got then. We've got the Fanatec CSL Elite wheelbase with the P1 wheel. And then over down here, we've got the Fanatec V3 pedals on it. The pedal deck is absolutely solid. Um, obviously with that load cell, there's absolutely no give in it whatsoever. And like I showed earlier, there's, there's no flex in the wheel at all. So um, no matter how much force feedback you're getting through the wheel, there, there's no flex in it. It's, it's absolutely fantastic. Um, the monitor we've got is a Dell, 32 inch quad hd monitor obviously we're we're just using the ps5 at the moment which is down here so we could have gone 4k but most 4k monitors are just limited to 60 frames per second 60 hertz 
unless you have HDMI 2.1. So what I'll probably do is a separate video where we, we go for a review with the, this particular monitor and just how you can use it with a PlayStation 5. But I have been playing F1 2021 with 120 frames per second on it, um, which has been pretty cool. So the seat then, obviously the seat we had before, it, it's, it's quite a squeaky seat and I do want to replace that eventually. But at the end of the day, this is sim racing. You're not actually moving. So the seat is essentially just somewhere we can sit. And then down here, we don't have the runners to move it forwards and backwards. I'm only going to be the, well, I'm, I'm going to be the only one using the rig really. So I'm quite happy to just have it bolted in place. And what we've done is we've taken out part of the aluminium that goes across there um, just to get the seat a bit lower because the mount on it is quite high. I will be building a PC eventually so we can get on iRacing and possibly some ACC stuff on PC. However, because of the prices of PC components at the moment, uh, that's just going to have to wait a little bit until those prices come down a bit. So um, just sticking to the PS5 for now. I think we're also going to have to move that Lion King uh, poster on the wall at some point and maybe put something a bit more racing related. Um, I think if I'm going to be doing any videos, with me in it, I'll probably be filming from sort of this angle. So maybe a, a shelf with some of my trophies on it or some sort of racing poster would fit in nicely there and really finish off the room. Thanks for watching guys. I hope you've enjoyed this video and do let me know if you have any questions about the setup I've got here at all. Um, but if not, give it a like if you have enjoyed it and consider subscribing if you haven't already. And someone has just buzzed on the door, so I have got to go.